Well, hello. Okay. In your notes. This right here is all the trench warfare stuff. This right here is the Eastern German Russian border stuff. We are starting here. So America. Guys, this war ends in 1918. America gets into it in 1917. I hear this every year. Yeah, we won that war. Okay, guys. We helped. And I said this in the last video. We helped. We didn't walk in and just clean up. Oh my gosh. I miss you're offending me. Sorry. Um, I'll get there later. But why were we out of this war for so long? Well, at the time, we definitely saw World War I as a European thing. We don't need to get involved. It's a European thing. I have nothing to do with it. That was very much so our mindset. Um, Germany? Nope. Wrong one. Great Britain was definitely putting pressure on us. America, where are you? And we were very much so isolationists. Leave us alone. We don't want anything to do with it. It's not my thing. Okie dokie. That being said, there are going to be some situations that are going to pull us in and definitely maybe more so than some of the other countries that are involved in this war we really feel like we have a reason to get germany okay that being said this right here is where we left things off last time okay if you remember russia has now pulled out of the war that has caused all of the german soldiers over here to flood the Western, um, what is that? The Western Front trenches. England is thinking about surrender. And then we're like, hello, England. We'll be there in a couple weeks. They're like, yes. Why? What happened? Well, a few things. First of all, just overall pressure. Just overall pressure. More importantly, though, this thing called unrestricted submarine warfare. Germany. Germany had already said, if you are in British waters, we're going to attack. We don't care who you are. Guys, British waters. Okay, that means if it's a French ship, if it's an, I don't know, Russian ship, it doesn't matter who it is, American ship. If it is in British waters, we're at war, we're gonna torpedo it with a whatever it is, a, a submarine. Sorry, they've already announced that. I don't know if I included the pictures. No, okay, look. Dang, I really wanna show it to you. Um. It was in like a newspaper article and it's little. Really? Found it. Okay, I need to save this picture. Yeah, here it is. Okay, let me save this real fast and then I can blow it up and make it bigger. Okie dokie. We'll just do it here. I'm about to sneeze. Sorry. Okay. I can't believe that I didn't have that picture in there. Okay, look. Okay. This was in a
I'm sorry, I'm getting texts from school. Okay, this was in a newspaper from Germany. Travelers intending to embark on the Atlantic voyage are reminded that a state of war exists between Germany and her allies and Great Britain and her allies. The war, I'm sorry, that the zone of war includes the waters adjacent to the British Isles, that in accordance with formal notice given to the Imperial German government, vessels flying the flag of Great Britain or any of her allies are liable to destruction in those waters and that travelers sailing in the war zone on ships of Great Britain or her allies do so at their own risk. This was in the newspaper. Now, I will be honest. Okay, you see 1915. It's little. Okay. It's not like it was like front page, front page news. Germany's going to blow up ships. It's little. <laughs> but they did say. If you're, if you're in British waters. We're going to blow you up. There's a reason. The reason is America is neutral, right? We're not involved in this war at all, right? Or were we? No, it's 1915. Look at the date. We don't get in this war till 1917. We're not involved. Maybe. Okay, you either are or you aren't, right? I mean, maybe we were sending supplies to, to, to England. Maybe some of those supplies were wartime supplies. Maybe. But I mean, Germany can't prove that. So basically, they have said, if you're on a British ship, or if you're part of her alliance, and you're in British waters, we're gonna shoot first. We have a ship. Okay, this is not an American ship. It's the Lusitania, it's British. Lusitania. The word is right, here we go. The word is right here, the Lusitania. Um, the Lusitania was the third ship that was torpedoed by Germany that was sent from America to Britain. <laughs> Sophie, you okay? Third ship, and that was kind of like, you're not doing it again, Germany. You're not going to do it again. And they were like, then keep your ships out of our waters. Okay, guys, this wasn't our ship. It's British, okay? But we're sending people on this ship, Americans on this ship, okay? Okay, every year I hear the same thing from kids. Why? Why would anybody be going from America to England in the middle of war? Um, why would anybody need to be out on the streets when we're quarantined? Miss, that's not the same thing. Guys, not only, yes it is, but second of all, sometimes you get stuck. If there were British people in America on vacation or whatever, they got stuck when the war started. Their family is still in England. They really want to go home. I get it. I'm in Dallas right now. I mean, by the time you're watching this, I'm not, but I'm recording this in Dallas. Look right here. Look at the date. 629. I braved the quarantine to leave Midland and come to Dallas. Why? Because my whole family's here. 
well, why can't I just stay in Midland? Why could? I was scared. I wanted to come to here where my whole family is. People wanted to go home. I get it. So they get on their ships and they go. Okay. Um, typically, the idea was if there was a passenger ship like this that was going across the ocean and going into um, British waters, they were going to have um, a couple of like naval escorts so that if they ran into a German U-boat or whatever, this is a passenger ship. This isn't like, it doesn't have, I don't know, whatever they are, guns or whatever on it, okay? But the idea was that they would have a military escort, okay? Okay, look at this ship. I know what you're thinking. That's not that ship, that's a Titanic. No, it's not. Um, the Lusitania and the Titanic were actually sister ships. They were built like at the same place. Um, they were the same model. The Titanic's bigger. Flint. Okay, sorry. But they're built at the same place. They both sank too. Hmm. Um, that being said, I know it looks like the Titanic, but you're looking at the Lusitania, okay? Um, the Lusitania only had a couple thousand, I think, people on her ship, I think. I don't really remember, but here's the point. It was very sparsely full. Nobody wants to be on it. They've already sank. One of my freckles, I can see it really well on my nose. Can you see it? Y'all are always like, Mitch, you don't have freckles. Yeah, I do. Um, anyway, the, <laughs> now it's gonna bother me. Anyway, okay, hold on. And I'm back. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, it was very sparse, yeah, very sparsely um, populated because nobody wants to be on the ship. Because again, people knew. I mean, even though that, that little thing was in the newspaper and it was just a little thing, people talked about it. People knew that the Lusitania was not the first ship to get torpedoed by the Germans. It's the third. Were there Americans on this ship? Yeah. Why would Germany do that? Well, because they knew that we were hiding wartime supplies in the luggage. No, we weren't. We would never do that. Okay, look, the Lusitania It's all the way from America to right here. And then a U-boat torpedoes it. Look how close she is to Ireland. It's crazy. And check this out. I'm not gonna show you this whole video but I will show you. She gets torpedoed, yeah? And then, you see how she's going down, okay? You see how she's going down? Uh -oh. Do you see what I'm showing you here? Look at this. The Lusitania is in the craziest shallow water ever. Like the Titanic is miles down. Look at this. Crazy. And here's the thing. When the Lusitania gets nailed, okay, it gets torpedoed. Just chaos happens because there's only one torpedo, one. And then there's a second explosion. They torpedoed us twice, jerks. We threw a fit because the ship sinks in like 15 minutes or something. Okay, listen, 
the Titanic, which sank in 1912, we're in 1915, I think. Um, the Titanic, which, I don't know what year we're in. Anyway, it sank in 1912, okay? The Titanic sank in about three hours. Now, the Titanic is a little bit bigger than Lusitania, but the Titanic was considered an incredibly fast sink. A ship that big shouldn't sink that fast. That's crazy fast. Three hours. The Lusitania, which is only a little bit smaller than the Titanic, sinks in like 15 minutes. Well, we threw a fit. Germany, you didn't torpedo us once. You torpedoed us twice. And they said, no, we didn't. Yes, you did. You nailed civilians and children and women. I'm, people probably had their dogs on board with them. And you nailed them twice. No, they didn't. They didn't. You're like, miss, you're just taking up for Germany. No, they didn't. Um, the story is, now here's just the story. The story is that the captain of the German, the, the U-boat, he looked through his little, I don't know what it's called, his little, is it periscope? I don't know. He looked through his little thingy. He was looking and he could see just like craziness on the ship. And he felt bad. And he's like, okay, we don't need to hit them a second time. Guys, they had only shot one, to one torpedo, not just from the story, like it can be like they we know that there was still another torpedo on the u-boat it was there they didn't shoot it so why were there two explosions well now we know we know because we can see the ship i hate underwater pictures it bothers me there was the torpedo yeah the second explosion um, was actually the. I'm in another room and I heard talking, but it's my mother. She's working from home too. Okay. Anyway, um, the second explosion was the, um, like the coal, the. They're so loud. It was the coal thing that exploded also. So that was the secondary explosion. Wherever they hit with the torpedo, they were able to also somehow hit the coal. They're so loud. And it exploded also. Okay. Okay, look. This is the ship. Um, this right here, kids ask sometimes, you're like, Miss, what is that? Uh, it's the little, like, I don't know, submarine explorer thing. Okay. This right here. This right here is the, I was looking for the date. I can't see it well enough. I can't remember the date of the Lusitania. Was it 1915? May 1915 what I thought. Okay. This right here is a newspaper. Okay. Lusitania sunk by a submarine. Probably 1,260 dead. Twice torpedoed off the Irish coast. Sinks in 15 minutes. Okay. We threw a fit because of that being, being torpedoed twice. And Germany's like, we didn't we still have the torpedo. We have it. We only have two on a ship. We still have one. We didn't torpedo it twice. And we said, then tell us this, Germany. How did it sink so fast? 15 minutes? Are you kidding me? How did it sink so fast? Germany said, oh, I don't know. Maybe because it was too heavy. What do you mean our ship was too heavy? Of course, it wasn't our ship. It was Irish, but that's okay. What do you mean it was too heavy? Oh, I don't know. What was being carried by it? We were like, oh, what were you implying? Okay. Were we sending wartime supplies? Well, 
There are still some historians who will counter this. I know because I read them. I don't know if I can leave it on this picture. We'll look at the old Lusitania. That's pretty. This right here, though, is a news article. I don't know when it's from. I just like cut it out. Want to hear what some uh, submarine dudes, submarine dudes, what is it called? Underwater dudes. I can't think of the word, but you know, the people that go underwater, scuba, scuba dudes. Say. <clears throat> Sheesh, man. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm reading from this thing. Right here. It's like underlined. Oh, oh, do you see that? Look at that first line. Included wartime essentials such as. I can't read it that way. Okay. <clears throat> In the luggage hold. Wartime essentials such as were found. Motorcycle parts. You're like, what the heck? Who cares? That's not a wartime yeah it is parts the parts that can be used in tanks and stuff um okay motorcycle parts metals cotton goods and food okay you can argue that that isn't a wartime thing any of that you could argue okay as well as i'm not making these numbers up four thousand two hundred hundred cases of rifle ammunition were counted cases not the little like box that you buy when you go hunting or whatever big giant cases full of little boxes what was it four thousand four thousand two hundred cases um let's see one thousand two hundred and fifty cases of shrapnel not explosive were found and then 18 boxes of percussion fuses. Um, the percussion, the percussion fuses are like for grenades, the fuse that you light. Yeah. I have read several people who still say oh, it's not proven. People who have been able to go down and explore the wreck. I don't know where all of a sudden we got this idea that what a learned, educated person says is just not true. It's just not true. Guys, I don't know crap about scuba diving. I don't know crap about underwater archaeology. So I have to trust that what they say is true. Maybe it's not and they're just lying. But they were an American team. An American team, you would think it would be in our best interest to not find anything. And they did. <laughs> Oops, Germany, we're sorry. We were sending stuff. Duh. Guys, everybody kind of knows that. Okay. Um, whether they want to admit that there was anything on the Lusitania or not, that's their business. But I mean, everybody kind of knows that we were sending stuff. We were sending supplies and stuff to England. That being said, something else happened. Gosh, Germany, how dare you send this? I just think this is funny. It's crazy. This right here is a telegram. Um, sometimes you're going to hear this called the Zimmerman telegram. Sometimes you're going to hear this called the Zimmerman telegraph. And sometimes you're going to hear the uh, la, la, uh, hear this called the Zimmerman report. Remember Zimmerman and maybe you'll be OK. Um, what did I put in your notes? I put the Zimmerman report, okay? Um, but again, sometimes you'll hear it called telegram and I've heard people say telegraph too. I'm like, telegraph, okay. But the Zimmerman report, telegraph or telegram. Okay, look, it's a telegram, like a Western Union telegram. Look at the date. J. 
January 19th, 1917. That's one year before my birthday. Oh, wait, one day before my birthday. Except like 80 years before my birthday, but that's okay. Um, so January 19th, 1917. Okay. And look, via Galveston. So this, this, this report, this telegram is going through Galveston in January of 1917. Okay, what is it? Well, I don't know. Unless you can read numbers. I don't know. Uh, 3528, 416, 172114. I understand that. It's code. Ooh. Who's it from? Well, I can tell you that too. It's from Germany to Mexico City. Are we in this war yet? No. Why is Germany? Who's at war with like everybody? Talking to Mexico. Our friend, Mexico. This code was decoded. It's figured out. Here's some of it being decoded. You're like, okay, it's in German. I don't know. Financial. Okay. Mexico. Texas. Arizona. Here's what the Zimmerman report is. It's a letter sent from Germany to Mexico. Basically, they say this. Hey, um, so America, they're going to get involved in this war. At some point, they're going to get involved. We need them to stay out. Mexico, we got it. We got it. We're going to win. But we need America to stay out. And we need America to stop sending supplies. We need America to leave England on her own. Because we got them. We can, we can just continue whittling away at England. She's going to die. Well, we need America out. So here's here's what we propose, Mexico. You attack America out of nowhere. Declare war on America from the South. Yeah. And that'll distract America from us. Then we can quickly beat England. Then we'll take care of this with, with America. We'll help you. Then we'll give you back the entire Southwest Territory that America stole from you. Okay, first of all, we didn't steal it. We won it in a war. If you won it in a war, you won it in a war. Second of all, when your enemy tries to get your friend to hate you, oh, it's on. Us in Mexico, we've had our little issues. We have had some, even at this time, we have. But we're allies. And we didn't take to this very well. We were like, who the heck do you think you are, Germany? That's our friend. And then we said, Mexico, um, are you entertaining this thought? No. No, we're, we're allies. We said, good. Good. Germany, we declare war on you. The Zimmerman telegram is right before my birthday, January 19th. And then boom, April, President Wilson is like, this isolation is on crap, gotta stop. Because Germany's not gonna stop. I gotta let Flynn out the door. Come here, baby. It's all right, come on. We are now in this war, which is good. 
because England's really struggling. Okay, this word right here, home front. If the front is where the war is fought, the idea of the home front is how the people at home, how the civilians help with the war effort. I'm not fighting in wherever we're fighting right now, okay? But can I help the soldiers? Yeah. And in World War One and World War II, everything stops. And everything focus on, focuses on the war. These turn into total wars. Okay, listen, we haven't really seen total wars since the world wars. Um, Vietnam was not a total war. Korea was not a total war. All this Iraqi Afghanistan stuff certainly is not a total war. The majority, and I don't mean like a 51%, I mean like 80% of America wanted us in this war. Three ships with civilians have been nailed by the unrestricted submarine warfare. You mess with Mexico? You were trying to get Mexico against us? How dare you? We're in. The majority of people are in. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go to that. Okay, so something interesting. Um, a lot of factories stop doing what they're doing and they start producing wartime stuff. Um, a couple of the more famous ones, um, Ford. Ford stopped making some of their like, well, not some, but they stopped making as many cars on the assembly line and they started making um, airplanes and tanks, okay? Um, another one of the famous ones was uh, Levi's jeans. They started making uniforms, military uniforms. Um, they started making like blankets. Um, um, what is it? Like medical gauze stuff, okay? They started making stuff like that. Factories started focusing on, okay, how can we produce for the war? Um, you know already, a lot of the men picked up and left. So who worked in the factories? The women. Absolutely. In fact, the women are going to impress the men so much with their, I don't know, making ability in World War I. Women are going to get the right to vote after World War I because of how they conducted themselves during World War I. Um, rationing. Rationing is another thing. That's where you save stuff and you say, okay, I will do without and I'm gonna send this to the war effort. So I, I, I ration, I, I save. I don't drink two cups of coffee every day. I only have half a cup of coffee in the morning and the rest of my coffee goes to the soldiers. I don't have 20 pairs of socks. I only have seven and I wear one a day and all the other socks go to the war effort. I'm rationing. Okay, um, gas was rationed in cars, um, coffee, uh, sugar, um, rubber for wheels, um, all this stuff, metals, okay? Um, a big thing was bicycle tires, I don't know. Um, so anyway, a whole bunch of stuff is rationed. It's like, I don't really need that, I can do without, I'll send it to the war effort, okay? Everybody was involved. We don't see that today. How do you get everybody involved like that? Well, it's kind of hard in 1917 when you don't have commercials constantly telling you, get involved, get involved. You don't have internet or, or social media telling you, get involved, get, in, go, get involved. But they have something else. Propaganda posters. You're already familiar with propaganda. A commercial is propaganda. It's one sided information to get you to believe something or buy something or agree or whatever, disagree with something. One sided. They don't give you both sides. It's like every news story on social media. It's like every meme you ever see. You don't understand necessarily the background. You just see that one thing. Okay. Most propaganda posters are going to be very, very bright and flashy. Oh, I don't, I don't mean flashy, like, not like glitter flashy, okay, but like, like bright, they want to get your attention. Most of them are also going to be speaking directly to you. To you. 
and most of them aren't actually going to have a whole lot of words. Why? Well, because literacy is low. Everybody and their dog doesn't know how to read like today. I have several propaganda posters. I love propaganda posters. I think they're so fun. This is probably the most famous World War I propaganda poster. Uncle Sam pointing directly at you. And he says, I want you. For the US Army. Come on, old man. Does that make you want to join any war? Unfortunately, it probably doesn't much anymore. We haven't had a total war. Something that was so obviously, oh, we have to fight this. But the, it's just not there in us much anymore. And not even, not even in my generation. Not even. I mean, shoot, I'm from the 90s. <laughs> not even in my generation. What about this one? Would this one make you want to join the war if you're an Irishman? Irishman, avenge the Lusitania. Or an American? Maybe your wife died on the Lusitania. Why'd you put her there in the first place? But what you see, it's very flashy. It catches your attention immediately. Bright colors. Again, not a ton of writing. Everybody knows what the Lusitania was. Now, if I had shown you this um, two weeks ago, would this make you want to join a war? You'd be like, mm, no, I mean, avenge, okay. What happened to it? Now that you know, and if you put yourself in their place, would you be a little more apt to join? I don't know. Hmm. What if this right here was your little girl? What if this right here was your uncle who died? Would you join? Look at this one. Here's another Lusitania one. Oh, I didn't mean to tell you. Dang. I actually don't want to tell you. I can't. I can't switch. Hold on. Let me go back. Here it is. I meant to have you guess. Obviously, it's Lusitania. Um, this is very simple. It has one word, literally, enlist. And there's a woman. Okay, she's sleeping. And she has a sweet little baby. She has a whole bunch of bubbles coming out of her mouth. Could she be one of the civilians that died in the Lusitania? What if your wife and your baby died in the Lusitania? Or your sister? Would you wanna join? Here's another one. Um, and I have a whole bunch of different like countries. This is probably England next. Why have I lost my arrows? There we go. Um, this guy is basically like, I don't know, Uncle Sam for England. He has a name, but I don't know. Um, it's simple again. Who's absent? Is it you? And he's pointing right at you with the flag right on his chest, the flag. Look at all these men back there. Roll call. Who's absent? Is it you? Britons, Britons, and Canadians in the US. Show your loyalty to the land you're living in. Enlist now. Um, this is very nationalistic, making you feel all nationalistic. Carry your flag along the stars and stripes. German. German. <clears throat> 
der Weltkrieg, the World War. German. Alles fürs Vaterland. And then down at the bottom. Alles für die Freiheit. You're like, okay, what's that? All for Vater, fatherland. All for the fatherland. All for the freedom. All for Germany. All for freedom. You're like, seriously, Germany's fighting for their freedom? From their point of view. Look at this one. It's French. I don't know French. Something, something, something. Liberation. Got it. Liberty. Remember the spirit of France that Maximilien Robespierre had people worshiping? You see some French soldiers here, okay. Here's another one. Oops, I thought there was another French one. Yeah, I like this French one a lot. Um, I don't know what it means. I could Google it. I swear to God. Um, something, 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 liberation, got it. I like this one a lot though. I think it's really cool and here's why. So you have all of these different flags, okay. Um, if you look at these flags, their flags fighting Germany, their allied flags, okay? Um, the one that jumps out to you is probably this one because it's ours. Um, there's France. Um, you see right there, this isn't that, but you see the, what is that, the Union Jack. This right here, it looks German, but it's not. It's Belgium. Um, and look right here. That's Kaiser Wilhelm. That is supposed to be the Kaiser, um, the, the, the emperor of England, uh -uh. Ooh, 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 ooh. the emperor of Germany. And look, everyone's coming down on him. They're like, we got you, Germany, coming down on you. I think this is a really great propaganda poster. In fact, I kind of want to paint it. You think I can? I think that, is that all? I don't remember. It is. What do you see? Okay, as soon as we come into this war, well, things start ending. You're like, I know, miss, it's because we caused the war to end. No. Guys, again, we didn't just get there and bust up on everybody and we won. One of the biggest things that we did, and y'all, our military was okay. We weren't like a world power yet in any way, shape or form. We also didn't suck. We have beaten England twice in the War of 1812 and in the Revolutionary War. We beat Spain in the 1800s. We got this. We're okay, we're fine. We're not great, we're not bad, we're just good. Here's what we brought with us that was almost more important than our guns. It's weird. You ready? You ready? Hope. What? Yeah. Do you know, we brought chocolate with us. I mean, that's important. We brought new shoes and socks and blankets you know we brought baby blankets i mean seriously what does a man want with a baby blanket he can't wrap up in it it's too little but if four years ago he left a baby with his wife at home he remembers what he's fighting for we brought coffee sugar we brought all kinds of fun stuff and we brought energy. We were invigorated. We were ready. We were mad. We were mad about the Lusitania and the Zimmerman report. We want to whoop up on some Germans. At the same time, as a lot of soldiers are going, why are we fighting? What is the purpose? 
we show up and we're like, oh, we know why we're fighting. And we show up with stuff that reminds people why they're fighting. Guys, some of those men had been stuck in a trench for four years. They couldn't get out. And we flood those trenches. And we're like, hey, look what I got here. And we give them a chocolate bar. We give them peanut butter. And they're like, oh, dear God, something is good in the world. Think about what they had been living in for four years. Well, I guess three years. Sorry. So we're, we're good, just like everybody else is. But, but understand, it's not like we got there and we were like, I don't know, Iron Man, and we just whipped up on everybody. We help. We, of course, flood the trenches and bring a ton of numbers onto the Allied side. But almost more importantly was the hope. Some of those men who are just done. They sat up a little taller. They held on to that little baby blanket. Oh, I forgot something. Um, we had a whole bunch of um, kids, like elementary kids, who wrote letters. I almost forgot that. They wrote letters. Okay, think about little elementary letters. It's gonna have like a picture and it'll say like, thank you for fighting in the war. It's not like it's a letter, okay? It's a little kid letter. But these men open these letters. These British men, these French men, these whatever men, these allies. And they're like, oh my gosh, little kids in America are writing to us. Whoa, little, little things like that. That really, when you're in the middle of a war, it's not a little thing at all. Not at all. That's what's going to really turn things around. In fact, This sucker's over.